Hi team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab. And today we're going to discuss about how to write, how to build information security policy in the organization from scratch. This is basically part of my GR series. And thanks for the amazing response you have shown on my video, and that motivate me to make more videos on a similar topic. In this video, we're going to discuss about what is policy, how to write policy, how to develop policy, what is a component of the policy, how to understand, interpret the requirement. So we're going to discuss complete hands-on practical approach of policy. It's not a theory session. We're going to use some sample policy templates and I will quickly guide through that particular template to give you the idea about how to write policy. My name is Prab Nair and for more information, you can basically check my LinkedIn profile. And if you're new to the channel, do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos on a similar topic. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. See, if you go by the definition, if you go by the definition or if you go by the English dictionary meaning of policy, policy is the plan or course of action, okay, of a government, political parties, business intended to influence the determined decisions, actions and other matter. Okay, so that is a definition according to the or meaning according to the Oxford. But when you're talking about in general term, Okay, I have seen a lot of people get confused with policy with the law. See, when you talk about law, law is basically framed from bringing justice to the society. But policy is framed for achieving a certain goals. That's why in Hindi we call nitya. It means initiatives. So law are for the people and the policies are basically made in the name of the people. Okay, and policy can be called as a set of rule that guide any government or an organization. How? Let me explain you with the reference. Now let's take example. Uh, this is the basically my company. This company is based out in Kerala. So we have a team of 50 people on the second floor. Okay, they basically support the EU operation. There is a one privacy regulations we have which is called as a GDPR. So if the 50 people who collecting and processing the EU data, they need to be comply. So this company need to be comply with GDPR. Okay. Now problem is that we have a lot of requirement. We have a lot of articles. We have a lot of controls. I cannot go and tell the 50 people about this GDPR controls. So what is the best way to bridge this gap? And this is basically where I will introduce the policy. Now policy basically include all the informations, instructions, which basically need to be followed by the 50 people. So instead of telling them about GDPR articles and all that, I just simply create uh, some privacy and information security policies in which I talk about, okay, no, no one's supposed to carry pen drive, pen drive is banned. No one's supposed to carry any kind of a data. Mobile is basically not allowed within the facility. So these are the indirect parameters we have that we basically introduce and and we applied that on the 50 people so when people 50 people basically follow the policy it automatically we meet the requirement of gdpr so that is how the policy today is bring the uniformity policy something which is introduced to control the behavior of the people sometimes we say policy is the intent of the management policy is the expectation of a management if if any senior management want to implement something in the organization they are very concerned about privacy they concern about security. So they will basically introduce a policy for that by which they want to implement that behavior instruction within the organization. That's why policy is always strategic in nature. So security policies establish rules that provide guidance in the protection of organization asset. And information security policy provide the rules for the protection of information asset of the organization. So this is just a high level introduction. Now let's discuss about the policy hierarchy. When we're talking about policy hierarchy, one more important statement which is missing here is policy are basically written to support the mission, vision and strategic planning of an organization. As I said, every organization start with the vision. Then we basically introduce a mission. Then we create a strategy, tactical and operation. So we have a people on the operation level and senior management is basically work on here. So the, what is a vision is whatever the vision and mission we have, it should be followed by the people. And for that reason only, we basically create a policy. So policy is basically set the expectation. So when you're talking about the policy hierarchy, okay, 
in the policy the first thing we talk about the principles principles are the corporate cultures okay it all about attitudes value goals practice that categorize the company that characterize the company okay so guiding principles set the tone for the corporate culture okay now let's take example like uh, in my company we have a principle we should respect the culture and customs of every nation contribute to the economic and social development through the corporate activities in the respective communities so that is basically my principle my my, my organization principle we respect the privacy of all the people we respect the privacy of a client that is a principle so when you working as a information security manager or when you working as a information security consultant your first thing need to understand the mission vision which is called as a principles of an organization once we basically understand the principles okay based on that the first thing we create a policy policy is a high level information a mandatory statement that need to be follow in the organization for an example so one of the policy is that all user must have unique user id and password now in this particular statement we add the word which is called as a must all user must have a unique user id and password so when the word must is there mandatory to be follow or all the systems must be protected with the password so that is a policy which talk about why now if i give this instruction okay that all user must have a unique user id password that confirm to con company password things and all that people get confused okay but what is all about password what is a kind of a password you want this is basically where we introduce a standard standard basically describe or prescribe the level of criteria okay 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 you can follow the eight character password fine so minimum eight character upper and lower case with alpha numeric is basically called as a standard which define the matrix and all that another way okay we must have a tv in the house that's a policy standard is basically we going for the lg because it having a great picture quality so standard is something used to define the criteria standard is basically used to measure the effectiveness sometime what happen <clears throat> when we talking about the technical technical configurations and all that we also talk about the guideline baseline now standard is something is mandatory to be follow but guideline is not mandatory to follow guideline is good to have okay guideline is basically a good way to create a strong password to think of phrases like song titles and all that guideline guideline is nothing like you know uh, it talk about you know you must you you should not good to have a unique username password never share your password so that is a guideline okay then when it comes to technology configurations and all that we also go for baseline now in this case as i said policy say that you must have a unique user id and password but what is a baseline baseline is a minimum configuration settings so here the baseline related to our password policies and standard example like mandated in the active directory group policy configuration okay now if i say every system must be protected with a password what is the quality of a good password use three character of alpha use three character password so this is like a baseline a minimum thing or we can go by window security best practices or window security baseline which talk about a good password requirements that is a baseline so whenever technology configuration come into the picture we use a baseline it is not necessary in every policy you can see the baseline okay whenever it lead to the technology configurations and all that example every system must be protected with a good controls standard say that antivirus password should be there baseline is we can refer the cis benchmark which talk about how to secure with the minimum settings of windows so that is how the baseline come into the picture but what we convey to the people is basically procedures because these are the simple steps step by step process by which the people will follow the pro policy standard guideline and baseline that's why procedure is always last in nature actually the policy document what you saw it include the procedure also okay so that is the thing now when we talking about policy policy is basically two type okay so before you begin writing it is very important to decide how many sections subsection will required before you put pen to the paper so designing a template is my recommendation because it allow the flexibility of editing and it save your time and aggravation also but there are two school of thoughts regarding a policy format first is to write each policy as a discrete document and this document type is refer as a singular policy example for password policy we have a separate document for the antivirus we have a separate document for incident management we have a separate document you can go to sans website you will get the idea or second is basically consolidated policy one policy which has everything 
in one policy we include all the requirement let's take example is the one i'm going to share today that was an example of the consolidated policy only like this is the one here so here you can see in this table of content i had everything and it is complies with 27001 so whenever you write a policy the first page is talk about the version name of the company where it is located and version date mention is 1-1-2023. We also need to have a version history, okay? This is basically have a version history. Yeah, this is basically the version history we have. The last revision happened, which called 1.0 in 1.6.22 by Rajiv. And uh, next version is basically now, which is basically 1.1.23, which is done by Prop. So it's very important to have a version history because based on a version history, we can able to track the integrity. Just imagine today HR sent an email, please find the updated policy. But when you open the version history, talk about the last year. And version history basically help me to track how many changes has been happened. And tomorrow if policy is basically ineffective, we can look for the previous version of the policy. That's why version history is very important. Now question is how to create a policy. So first step is schedule the meeting with the legal team, business team, management team and everything. Because it is very important to first understand the business requirement. Because policy we create based on a business requirement, business requirement and legal requirement. So here I have taken an example is we need to identify the applicable legal requ requirement. If you, if you go by the GLBA, Gram Leach Billy Act, they have a requirement that, okay, all the entities to develop whether to the information security policies, okay, that protect the customer information responsible to board of directors. So they're saying that GLBA is saying that you need to have a policy. HIPAA say all the covered entities, which is called healthcare companies and all that should have a comprehensive information security policy. PCADS is also saying in the requirement is organization entire company inform employees of the expected duties related to the security. It means strong security policy need to be have. So when you're creating a policy and if someone asks why we have this policy, you give justification as for the legal regulatory ground, we need to have a policy. But policy is, is something not we can create like randomly okay so we do a lot of analysis the first thing we do is planning planning is very important where we identify the need and context of the policy okay policy should never be developed for their own sake there should be always a reason that's why a glba has a reason gdpr has a reason pc disease has a reason business has a reason so policy may need to support the business objective contractual obligations and regulatory requirement always remember Second, basically we talk about policy should be defined in such a manner. It should be aligned with the business and legal requir regu regulatory requirement. Okay. So in order to be, uh, things working effectively, it's very important that it should be aligned with the business legal requirement. Otherwise there's no point of having a policy. And that is actually the reason third, the language, which is called as a audit perspective or audience perspective. So in order to be effective policy, it must be written in an intended audience. It should not be rigid. So language is powerful and is arguably one of the most important factor in gaining the acceptance. Okay. So writing tasks required the audience is identified. That's the most important thing. We can consult external people, legal regulatory requirement for that. We can consult the legal officers, privacy officers and understand, take their input. It is good to take their input. So you get the visibility. That's the most important thing. Okay. And then you need to submit the policy as a draft to the board. They will basically review and they will approve the policy. So create by the information security officer and approved by the board of director. Now, when we're talking about policy content, there will be some keywords we used, which is actually play an important role. The first keyword is basically called as a must. Must this word is basically mandatory. Okay, which is also called require. Then another keyword we basically use called as a shell. Shell basically mean that item is absolute requirement. Okay, example like we shall require to GDPR and all that. So when we have a requirement clause, we use shell. And when we need to enforce our requirement, that is called must. So must not shall not mean item is basically prohibit item is absolutely prohibited. You must not share the password. Okay should will be used for the adjectives and recommended mean there may be exit valid reason in a particular circumstances to ignore the particular item okay so when we document should not this phrase or not recommended there may be exist for a valid reason in a particular circumstances where the particular behavior is acceptable or useful but the full implication should be understood 
and case carefully wait before implementing any behavior described with this label so it's very important most of the questions most of the pointers you can see about the must must not shall shall not required and shall but most of the things you can see around the must now let's take a case study i'm i'm basically working for the infosec train and infosec train is looking for the policy so scenario is very simple is infosec train seek to maintain the confidentiality integrity availability of the information about its staff students visitor alumni and its affair generally it is extremely important to the company to preserve its reputation reputation of the university of education and integral part so compliance with the legal regulatory requirement with respect to the information is fundamental so business manager or business team has given me clear clarity about what is the expectation so two three important are things are there they want to maintain the cia they want to protect the data of information customers and everything they want to maintain the prestige with universities and most important they need to comply with the legal regulatory requirement so after having a meeting after reviewing the business process document you need to first schedule the meeting with the senior management to understand is any other expectation they have review the vision statement mission statement then uh, speak to the legal team understand what is the effective regulations we have which is associated with the company and that is how you can able to create the functions okay so it's very important the policy will be applicable for a boundary so it's very important to define the scope here we take an example is the scope of information security policy is all about record held by college relating to the school people student staff visitor conference guest external contractor and we also need to maintain the policy for marketing plan financial records and minutes of meetings so that is something is basically part of the scope now question is what will be the content of the policy the question is what is the content of the policy the first thing is called as a version history now if i go back to the document here you can see the version history talk about the current policy version is 1.1 okay so when you creating a policy you need to mention the table of content okay this is the example of the consolidated policy so first thing is introduction is very important okay introduction basically give the idea about why we are exist so here i have given the statement is aspirant outline or guideline and provision for preserving the security of our data and technology infrastructure because infosec is a company of aspirant so you need to give introduction so example like you are into healthcare and you are very concerned about phi and all that so you can say blah 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 company outline the guidelines and provision to preserve the security of the data so it's a very common statement then we basically give the purpose every policy must have a purpose so purpose basically means specify the intention of the entire security policy very simple statement i mentioned all po this policy define security requirement apply to the information asset of the entire aspen technology if you working for any other company you can say this policy applied define the security requirement for all the data which is basically held in the company and all processing of the data collection of information will be processed according with the india law us law and iso 27001 so this information you will get from a legal team now second important thing we have a scope because this policy applicable for whom so simple english i basically article more in detail but you can keep it simple english this policy apply to all the employees contractor volunteers okay this policy must be communicated by the supervisor to all the employees the security policy is a technology independent does not include implementation this is something i mentioned in detail but you can make it simple is this policy applicable for all the people who collecting my data simple and in order to make it more generic you can define the scope also this policy applicable on the aspirant infrastructure this policy basically applicable on the business data this policy is applicable on the security of information held in the company computers then as i said this version history come on the first so here we have version history the last version was 1.0 which is done by rajiv and the current version is basically uh, updated on 162023 till today and it is done by the prab so version history is very important now it is very important any policy you create you need to define the responsibility like ciso responsibility toward the so in that case i can give a short tips download any template and see what is a common responsibility and if that is basically different from uh, from your organization then ask you can ask your rec chart you can ask your company's organization chart and according to that you can document this responsibility if you going for the consolidated one for each and every policy we have a different responsibility okay so this is just a high level i given the example okay so responsibility is basically very important as a table you need to define in the policy and 
you know in in policy document there's a lot of definitions are there a lot of statements are there so it is good you can create one table here and which you can basically explain all the definition like what is confidentiality what is integrity what is availability what is asset what is business so you can create one table in which you can document all the definitions so here we're taking the first example like we have a one policy i have i am a consultant and i want to create a policy and the policy is basically called as a policy for it asset okay so first i need to give a statement so when we talk about statement statement basically talk about we are creating a policy and what is the reason for that so here you can see IT asset management policy provide the framework for appropriate and effective management of IT equipment because we introduce any policy to bring the uniformity. It is a policy of the Aspen technology that all department information technology hardware are used for the business to maintain the accurate records in a safe cost effective manner consistent with the applicable law and regulation. Now if you're creating a policy for incident management you can say it is a policy of Aspen technology that all department information technologies or information assets okay will be protect with the incident management process incident management process is basically introduced to respond to the incidents so you can take a definition of incident management process and you can take a definition of your organization merge and you can give this as a policy statement then if you think okay you have a lot of complex words add the definition term as an next column it's mandatory so people get the visibility okay i'm i'm reading one this term what is the meaning of this term now any policy you introduce okay you talk about what is this policy and why we are exist exist is very important so you have to give a purpose now in purpose you can have a multiple thing you know the purpose of this policy to be comply with legal regulatory requirement by purpose of this policy is to organize the asset purpose of the policy to meet the business objectives this is a simple english you need to spend only effort in the one policy then you can make a replica of that so it asset policy define the requirement for proper secure handling of it assets the policy shall you can see the word here is now shall which is mandatory produced to provide the clear instruction on the appropriate management of physical it assets to ensure the university is meeting the legal regulatory so that is how we have given the clarity must and shall shall is mandatory now the question is policy apply on which area so scope need to be defined so this is the scope the policy apply to desktop printers and other equipments okay in general to any resources then we giving the detailed statement of the policy what is included in the policy so you can add the policy statement like it asset must use in a connection with business activity okay so here in the policy part you going to narrate your requirement okay like example like we are creating a disciplinary policy so we giving a requirement discipline policy all people must be come by 6 pm no one is going to uh, speak loud no one is going to abuse same like there is a policy column in which you going to detail you going to give your instructions okay like it it asset only use connection with business activity so we giving the statement here all it asset must be classified categorized every user responsible active directory laptops must be secure if left and when a possible policy should be automatically enforced whenever policy encryption erasing technology should be implemented so this kind of a statements has been given okay now if you're talking about incident management policy you talk about you know in stage 1 preparation identification containment you know so that is something is a instruction you are enforcing then we talk about exception definitely it's very important to define the exceptions because not necessary every time we will comply with the policy sometime we go beyond the policy let's take example there's a policy regarding data security is that every data must be protected with proper password and all that and you're not supposed to send any kind of a internal data outside but sometime what happen regulatory want a data in a plain text so this is basically where i will apply the exception process so it's very important in the policy you have to define this exception process it mean that if you are going against this policy we need an approval we need to assess the risk of non compliance this is the party who going to approve that and then we can go for that so that's why exception is required here you can see in few instance aspen system may require to be exempted from the asset management process due to the possible technical difficulties any such exceptions to the current policy must be document approved by the aspirants exception management process so you can have a separate bullet point for that then we talk about the responsibility for the it asset management you can it's up to you you can create a one line statement or you can basically create a table it's very important how many people are associated with the it asset management document their responsibility or like a raci chart like you can have a process then you can define who is responsible who is consult or you can create a table in which talk about ceo responsibility toward the asset management cio responsibility service lead and all that so roles and responsibility is important now 
are we going to comply with any standard definitely so here i took the iso 27001 clause okay iso 27001 clause and said okay inventory of assets so okay we need to make an inventory now it's up to you how you want to create an inventory are you going to create your own inventory concept or are you going to follow any standard and this is basically where i follow the 27001 standard which say that okay assets associated with the information process facility shall be identified okay and we have defined the process of how to tag the assets then ownership of asset is required so we are following 27001 acceptable use of asset we fall in 27001 return of assets handling of assets now it's up to you you can create a separate information on this or in a policy statement you can add it's up to you sometimes what happens in the policy you need to specify the policy is compliant the standard example when you say it asset must use a connection with the business activity the question is how so according to the clause uh, 8.1.1 you need to have an inventory of assets now understood how the policy as a statement support by the standard if i'm saying that here uh, all it asset must be classified yeah we have an inventory of asset which is called iso particular clause when active desktop laptop must be secure if left unattended how we have a standard for that acceptable use of asset or return of assets so it's up to you okay you can create you can add this particular thing in the policy statement or you can have a dedicated table and last is basically sponsor who will be the sponsor mostly ceo is basically the one who signed this policy so this is how the policy document we create do let me know how do you find this video and do let me know shall i made more videos on a grc okay this is all from my side and stay tuned with infosec train and prabnair youtube channel for more videos and do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos but before we wrap up this is the summary we have every policy document should have a version history it should have an introduction purpose need to be specified scope history roles in that particular policy policy definitions okay policy exceptions if we have any standard and signer policy default need to be review annually so this is all from my side stay tuned for more information and please subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos on a similar topic bye take care